Hello, my name is Talon Petty. I'm the marketing specialist for the Field Bus Foundation. Today, I wanted to show all of you guys how to properly strip, crimp, and heat shrink H1 registered field bus cable for a professional, organized, and lasting installation. Now that I'm um, getting this thing started, I want to go through uh, all the components of what we're going to be talking about here today. Um, the first of which, of course, is the um, H1 field bus cable. Uh, in the U.S., this is, uh, and honestly in most places, uh, orange tends to be kind of the uh, standard on H1 field bus cable, but uh, that can actually be ordered in any color from numerous manufacturers. Um, also, you'll see once we get to the inside, uh, the different jacket colorings of the, uh, the wire inside of the jacket. And in this case, it is red and black, but oftentimes you'll also see um, an orange and brown or orange and blue. Uh, again, all is very much acceptable, and there's not exactly a, a written standard for which those should be. Uh, the, the only real requirement here is that it should be um, twisted, stranded pair. So, uh, and, and we do recommend an, a minimum of 18 gauge wire should be used. Uh, it's also important to kind of note that you guys will want to make sure that you do not ever exceed the minimum bend radius of each particular H1 cable. Um, and that is, of course, manufacturer recommended, so you'll have to uh, speak to whoever your cable manufacturer is uh, directly to discover that. Um, of course, also what you're going to need is a good set of um, wire jacket strippers. So in this case, I just picked up a cheap pair from the local hardware store, but there are um, numerous different manufacturers that make it. Cobalt Price Process has some, um, but again, you can kind of pick that up in, in uh, multiple different areas. Uh, next would be, of course, some actual cutters so that you can cut your cable to length. Uh, heat shrink, your um, cable jacket strippers, also a very important tool to have once we get inside this jacket, you can um, cut off that interior. And lastly, and uh, very much importantly, is uh, cable ferrules and ferrule crimpers. You want to make sure that you have both of these. It's uh, very important that you not only have the ferrules, but you also have the crimpers. And of course, last but not least, you want to also make sure that you have a heat gun so that you can uh, shrink that tubing onto the jacket um, without any direct heat source. Uh, this is actually a pretty, pretty important step um, for a real clean professional installation. And, and one of the pieces that I also recommend is the shield here for the heat gun. This uh, heat reflector is actually really great at, uh, and it clips right onto your heat gun like this. And as you, as you go to shrink the tube, It'll make sure you get a nice, even um, heat on all sides of the shrink, um, shrinking it really nicely around the cable. So that's also an important element. Now we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, what I would recommend, of course, is if you don't have a clean cut on the wire, you want to always start with a nice, clean edge. So just for illustration purposes, we'll go ahead and clip this off here. Um, and I'll just clip off a little bit. That's all that's kind of necessary at the moment. Uh, but of course, the first step is going to be to strip the outer jacket. As we talked about previously, um, you want to get uh, these jacket strippers. They really are convenient. They're adjustable uh, depth cutting blades, and it makes things real quick, real simple. Uh, what you do is you just put the wire inside the jacket stripper, give it just a couple of quick rotations like that, pull it back off, you got a clean cut right through the wire and you can just pull it right off just like that. It's very simple, very clean. Um, it makes for a, a heck of a lot quicker process for you. So um, anyway, in this case, I'll, I'll even do it twice here for you guys and I want to make sure that I get a good uh, good distance on this. You want to make sure that you, you clip off just enough of the outer jacket uh, to, to do what's going to be necessary to attach it to your instrument, but you don't want to do any more than that. You want to keep as much of this uh, jacket intact for as long as you can. So anyway, now that we've done that, 
what you'll want to do next is is to pull back the shield wire and sort of separate it from the from the rest of this wire and foil. And in the U.S. in particular, uh, we do single point grounding. Uh, I know that it's also different in many regions across the world, so I guess that would depend on, on where you are in particular. But in the U.S., uh, if this was to connect to an instrument, what we would do would actually just clip back this uh, shield wire back here at the jacket. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip that off. Real simple. Um, next, of course, would be to take this foil and separate it from the wires. So what you want to do is actually separate and remove this foil from the wire, which is a very simple process. It's, just, it's not very tough. I mean, it's, it's about the consistency of a regular home tin foil. So peel that off and remove it. And next, now you have your two exposed wires. And again, like I mentioned earlier, in this case, we're using a uh, red and black wire in here. But again, it could be orange, it could be blue, um, and, or it could be orange and brown. So uh, those are typically the popular colors anyway. So the next step, of course, is to also peel back the jacket on the inner cables. So you're going to get yourself some nice wire strippers. Um, these are really great strippers. They're, they're fast. They're easy. They, they all have different gauging right on the sides here so you know exactly what you're going to be clipping at. In this case, this wire is all 18 gauge. So I'll put it right here in 18 gauge and you'll want to clip about, I'd say, half an inch back. Just enough to uh, get the wire ferrules on there. So you get two quick clips like that. Pull back the shield just a little bit and then you can actually separate it fairly easily by hand. Um, I like to go ahead and at this point give it a little twist hand, make sure I keep those those tight while I clip this other uh, jacket back as well. Again, about 18 inches, or oops, about half an inch rather, I'm sorry, 18 gauge wire. And you see why I actually said that earlier about that, because see I just caught just a little bit here on this cable and they, and they kind of splayed out. And whenever you're going to be crimping the ferrules on, you want nice tight uh, roll of the copper there. So anyway, not a problem. Tighten that back on, pull this one off, give it the same kind of deal. Um, and this red one I'm actually going to cut back uh, a little bit further. Just for illustration purposes, I'll show you guys um, what exactly you can do with that. But Okay, so now that you've got the, the um, shield wire clipped back, again, uh, I would recommend on your different regions that you uh, that you consult the, the standard practice there in your region, whether it be um, in the U.S. or Europe or Asia or wherever. Um, you might have different uh, grounding techniques. So, uh, and a great resource actually for that is, is the Field Bus Foundation has a system engineering guideline we call uh, AG181. It's a really great resource. It says a lot about um, installations and, and best practices kind of uh, from the industry. And it's most importantly written by end users and engineering companies, which is a, a real big plus. It's not written by us. It's not all fluff for just us. It's, it's real industry best practices. So anyway, moving on again. Now that we've got our, our wires here, we'll actually take the ferrules. Um, in this case, uh, again, the coloring doesn't matter. There's many different color ferrules and sizes that you can get. But uh, in this case, I got gray ones. And as you can see, you slip it right over this copper jacket, just like that. And it slips on there real nice. It should be tight. You shouldn't feel any loose looseness or wiggles, and it shouldn't be a struggle. The wire shouldn't start bunching. Otherwise, you may be using too small of a ferrule. And if it wiggles and slides too freely, it might be too large of a ferrule. So it's important to get the right size. But as you can see, um, I'm not sure if it's very clear in here or not, but this ferrule lands perfectly on the jacket. There's not copper hanging out of the end. It's just exactly where you need it. And the next step, of course, would be to take your, your trusty crimpers here, put the ferrule inside the crimper of the appropriate size, click down, you hear that click. It means it's, it has uh, notched nicely. And I like to also give it a nice tug. If you pull on that, it shouldn't slide off. If, you, if it does slide off, you want to redo it. And again, make sure you got the right size and everything. Now, moving on to this red wire that I mentioned earlier, I made it a little bit long because I'm going to show you some here. But 
as you slide this um, barrel down, you might be able to tell as well here, but there's a little extra copper that comes out in the end. Um, generally, you don't want to see that happen just because it's going to make the installation a bit tougher for you in terms of uh, landing these wires in their terminals. A lot of times these things are a little shallow. If you've got a bunch of wire hanging out in the end, you're going to end up uh, you know, bottoming out before you can get it all the way in there nicely. So, not a big deal though. Go ahead and um, crimp it just as you would. Again, you hear the click and you can see the extra cable and it's real simple. Just grab a couple um, you know, some dikes here and snip off that extra copper. So there you go. Very simple. Of course, the last step now is to take your heat shrink and wrap it over your existing insulation. In this case, I just about, I don't know, maybe an inch or so worth, just enough to kind of cover this existing uh, exposed jacket down here. And to give it a nice clean look, you want to make sure these wires stay nice and tight as far as possible so that you have a very um, smooth insulation, clean insulation, and no extra wire or runs kind of all over the place. And a, a good way to actually remember it is, is the term insulate, isolate, and keep as short as possible. So uh, in this case, uh, it kind of refers to the wiring in general, right? You want to make sure everything's insulated for as long as it can be. You want to make sure everything's isolated as much as it can be. And of course, you want to keep things short. You don't want a bunch of extra wire and just ran all over the place for no reason. Uh, there are limitations to the uh, distances that can be run in field bus, um, but of course, you know that that's going to be part of your installation. So now, the last step would be to heat shrink this. So let me grab the heat gun, and I will show you that part. Now, the uh, last step, as I mentioned, is to actually heat shrink this tubing and uh, as shown earlier I've got my uh, heat gun with the heat reflector makes real real simple uh, heat shrinking just like this it's going to be a nice clean shrink um, to, to one point here I also want to say that uh, while uh, it's not unheard of to use butane torches or lighters to shrink heat shrink um, it's not a recommended practice. You generally don't want an open flame, especially in an installation scenario. So whenever possible, this is always the best and most recommended solution. So anyway, without further ado here, uh, I've got the heat shrink on my wire and I've got it set where I want it to be. And now I just click on my heat gun. You can actually hear this thing kind of wind up on the air. And I will actually just put this uh, heat shrink right down into shield here. And you just give it a quick little turn like this, a couple quick turns, and there you go. As simple as that. I've already got a nice heat shrunk set of wires and a very clean and professional looking installation. And that concludes this video on how to properly strip, crimp, and heat shrink H1 field bus cable. Remember, 90% of the problems out in the field are physical layer issues we can begin to properly uh, wire segments and cables and, and really take the added steps of making sure that you have a clean, professional, organized installation from the start, you're going to eliminate a lot of those issues. Thank you guys for watching.